Welcome back, everybody, to game number two of Korok versus S4. If Korok wins this game, he takes a 2-0 series sweep. If he loses this game, it goes uh, to a deciding game number three. Will he be able to do it? We'll find out. S4 had some really bad luck in that last game, missed my, as well as uh, not perfect micro skills. If you've seen Shitty Digest, you know what I'm talking about. But you know, the micro skills were not entirely there. Uh, fed the courier to Korok. You know, 1v1 made, if you feed the courier and it hasn't delivered your bottle, that's pretty much game. Even if you just feed the courier, it's still bonus gold to your opponent. And then on top of that, uh, Korok got first blood. And that combination, that's like a 600-700 gold lead just off of the first blood as well as the courier death. So let's see what happens with that courier. I think maybe... Uh, nope, still still using the same strategy. You're going to body block the creeps with the courier. And then aggressively contest the runes with your hero. Interesting. Every player has pretty much had a different strategy this tournament. We've seen some players going for courier scouts. Some of them delayed That's until after they've seen their opponent land. Some of them just right away. Why the hell not? Uh, we Sometimes we see them parking their courier mid in the trees. If you're on the dire side over here. Uh, haven't really seen anyone use these radiant trees because they're kind of out of the way. Um, we've seen all sorts of stuff. And in this game, we are going to see the courier block. Which... I gotta say, if you can do it properly, it does it's a decent alternative, but obviously it's not going to be as good as a true hero block, and it's a bit harder to micro, but once again, S4 is going to get the rune to start, and it's another great last hitting rune. Oh, S4. Especially on Queen of Pain, who already has the slight advantage when it comes to last hitting to begin with. You can see right away, with this rune spawn, it's going to be very difficult for Korok. And I would say this is even worse than what we saw last game, because the illusions last forever, and on top of that, you're already better at last hitting, whereas on the puck side of the matchup, you're you're slightly worse at it to begin with, so it kind of equalizes things. But with this, with having that edge to begin with, and then having this rune, it's going to be very, very tough for Korok. We'll see what he can do, though. He's just got to kind of wait out these illusions. He's managed to chip one down. But even though the damage already done, six last hits on the Queen of Pain total, one on Korok. And just continuing to chop away at these creeps. Korok, you can see that inferior, not having the illusion, he's not able to contest that last hit. When he tries to, S4 just easily claims it. If you do enough damage with your hero that even after your opponent attempts to deny the creep, it's still killable, but you can also just last hit it yourself, then it gives you such a big advantage with the last hitting war, because they can't, they, their pump fakes don't scare you. You just say, oh, hey, go ahead and try to deny that. I know you don't have enough damage to do it. And the small mind games, S4 using them to his full advantage. Fantastic. And then middle lane, S4 versus Korok. It all continues. I'm getting excited for today's later matchup as well. Funic versus Sing. Uh, two of the flashier players, I have to say. And Sing, of course, we've seen some crazy shenanigans from him. I don't know if we'll see it today, but we saw enough to last us a lifetime in the in the circus that was Merlini versus Sing Sing. Rune is going to spawn, and it will be bottom. It will be a regen rune. When it comes to last hits, that early start by S4... Really has accumulated. He's up to 12 and 5. Korok sitting at 3 and 2. Just getting absolutely crushed. And this is what I expected Dyer's to see in Sing Sing versus Marlini. Is the Queen of Pain really does have, especially when it comes to last hitting, has the edge. Puck can definitely get kills, but it mostly comes down to forcing mistakes. And in goes Korok. S4. I was already used that level 2 scream. Is he going to be able to win the man fight? Korok's trying to run. S4 blinking it. Doesn't have mana. Oh, and he dodges the scream as well. Can Korok orb his way to victory? Salve up by S4. Orb was still cooling down for a quarter of a second there. And S4 secures a first blood. This Queen of Pain seems to be getting the edge in these games. Of course, S4 hasn't won the matchup yet. Needs two kills. But a first blood this early and double the CS of your opponent. And rune control. That means you have bottle and you have boots and your opponent may have neither or just have picked up the bottle no still sitting on a bunch of tangos Had, doesn't even have bottle gold yet so s4 what he can do as soon as this bottle comes in is just start bullying korok entirely off of the lane it's going to be very difficult for korok to last hit even under tower when you have boots and they don't you can just walk up past the creeps let the creeps tank the tower and then just scream and even walk around to other locations where you can just kind of chip away at them with auto attack so having the boots and bottle when korok is neither it is an absolutely gargantuan advantage of 1v1. Don't be fooled by the fact that these are small items. This can completely throw the game in the other direction. In spite of that, Quark's even going in, but I feel S4 is just waiting for this. Scream number one. Now the bottle up. Maybe it's not. Is he actually going to get the kill? Oh, S4 does blink away. Good thing for him he didn't go for Shadow Strike, because if he did, that blink still would have been cooling down, and he may have been in a bit more trouble. 
That's four. Looking for that killing blow. Korok's already used everything. Nothing up his sleeve. Two quick kills for S4. And we're headed to a game number three, ladies and gentlemen.